Welcome. Happy Sabbath. Thank you for everyone that's contributed to our worship service and behind the scenes this morning. Thank you, especially for the uh, memorized scripture reading. Wasn't that special? Amen. Got a sermon today. It's entitled 50 Ways to leave your savior. And it's about snares. And I've got another scripture reading that relates to the one that Stella just read, or memorized, sorry. Second Timothy 2, 26. And that they may come to their senses and escape the snare of the devil, having been taken captive by him to do his will. When I was growing up, somewhere around 1975, there was a catchy song on the radio. Though it's cynical when you think about it, it was about 50 ways for men, represented by different men's names, to lead their lover and set themselves free. Decades later, some of the lines from this song can still pop into my conscious memory. A reminder to be very careful of what I allow to enter into my brain. This sermon is my attempt to make lemonade out of lemons by portraying 50 snares of the devil that he uses to separate us from our savior. Satan prowls around like a roaring lion, seeking people to devour. We are all too familiar with the obvious destruction caused by drug overdoses, suicide, crime, violence, trafficking in persons, gangs, riots, accidents, disasters, drought, famine, warfare, pandemics, genocide. Snares are less obvious. They're intended to be concealed. It's easier for the roaring lion to catch people that are already trapped in one or more hidden snares. Some might agree that this is one of the primary end time missions of the Seventh-day Adventist Church, to warn the world from being snared, deceived, or tricked by the devil. That's a picture of a simple snare you see on the slides. Um, there's many different types of snares. Animal rights groups don't like snares. Snares uh, is a terrible way to be caught, but they've been used throughout a lot of human history. Some states probably prohibit snares. And I have a disclaimer here. If anyone sees or hears a familiar name during this sermon, it is only a coincidence for the purposes of rhyming, <laughs> not, not because I thought that this sermon needed to be directed at anyone personally. Stay in the dark, Mark. Satan is successful at keeping many people in spiritual darkness. They don't even know that God is knocking at the door of their hearts. Oops. No need to repent, repent, Brent. Satan tricks many into rejecting God's offered gift of a spirit of repentance. Number three, be apathetic, Vic. Satan is not concerned when there's no special effort made to resist his snares, when apathy or indifference rules in the church and in the world. Just miss the bus, Russ. Satan uses all his tricks to control circumstances and the minds of worshipers so that the message of a sermon, maybe even this one, will miss those whom he is deceiving on that same subject. Hop on a plane, Jane. Satan pressures those that need to hear a warning message to instead get busy, wrapped up in a work 
project or other activities that take them away from where the message is being presented. Couldn't care less, Wes. Satan doesn't have to worry much about those stuck in an attitude of carelessness. They are mostly untroubled and unconcerned about spiritual things. And when they do sense some spiritual duty, they perform it in a negligent way with disregard for its importance. You could stay lazy, Daisy. Avoidance of work, activity, effort, or movement. Satan knows that we will need serious prayers to our Lord for divine grace and power to break the spell of laziness. Eat up a storm, Norm. Satan tempts us to indulge our appetite. This fogs our senses until we fail to understand the spiritual things that we most need to learn. Die with the most toys and win, Quinn. Self-gratification has practically become the religion of Western civilization. The new motto is, if it feels good, do it. No need for prayer, Claire. Satan knows that all whom he can lead to neglect prayer will be overcome by his attacks. No Bible study, buddy. Satan knows that all whom he can lead to neglect Bible study will be overcome by his attacks. Sound familiar? Too much happening, Jen. Satan uses every possible means to amuse the mind. Television, social media, concerts, parties, dances, movies, sports, electronic gaming, so on and so on and so on. This makes it so much easier to neglect prayer and Bible study. Find a lot of fault, Walt. Satan's right-hand helpers are the accusers of the believers. They paint a false picture of the words and actions of those who love and obey the truth. They misrepresent, insinuate, and arouse suspicion. Be insincere, my dear. Satan's plan is to bring into the church insincere, unconverted doubters who have no real faith in God or in God's word, but merely agree to a few of the principles of truth and pass themselves off as Christians. Doesn't matter what you believe, Steve. Satan knows that truth received in love heals the damage done to the soul of the recipient, but falsehoods can be fatal to the soul. Let the false teachers stay, okay? Servants of God have always had to contend against false teachers. Elijah, Jeremiah, and Paul firmly and fearlessly oppose those who were turning people from the word of God. Tolerance of false teachers was unacceptable to these defenders of the truth. Make your own plan, Stan. Vague and fancy interpretations of scripture and the many conflicting theories of religious faith are the work of satan to confuse minds so that people won't recognize the truth churches all over grover the conflict and division which exist among the churches of christianity are in a large part due to the common practice of twisting the scriptures support a favorite theory. Instead of carefully studying God's word with humility of heart to obtain a knowledge of his will, many seek only to discover something odd or new. Distort the intent, Kent. Take passages of scripture and separate them from their context. Take only half a verse, if that half says what I want it to say to support my worldly desires, even if the other half of the verse or other verses would show the true meaning to be the opposite. Make up a story, Corey. 
using an active imagination to seize the symbols of Bible prophecy and create a private interpretation without using the Bible as its own interpreter. Be the big boss, Ross. Beware of religious leaders who study the scriptures without a humble, teachable spirit, and then select portions of scripture to serve their own purposes. Their followers are denied the privilege of determining the sacred truths of the Bible for themselves. No church can advance unless its members are earnestly seeking for truth as if it was buried treasure. It's too complex for me, D. The Bible was designed to be a guide to all who wish to become acquainted with the will of our Savior. The important matters that concern our salvation were not left in mystery and were not revealed in such a way as to confuse or mislead the honest seeker after truth. The word of God is plain to all who study it with a prayerful heart. Set yourself free, Lee. Satan deceives many into setting the law of God aside. Because of this, they remain under the slavery of sin while they claim to be free. Science without God, Rod. To many people, scientific research has become a satanic curse. Even the greatest minds, if not guided by the word of God in their research, can become bewildered in their attempts to investigate the relationship of science and inspiration. Accept theories as facts, Max. Many accept mere theories and speculations as scientific facts, and they incorrectly think that God's word is supposed to be tested by the teaching of Satan's false science. The creator and his works are beyond their understanding. God is dead, Ted. Satan gets people to doubt creation and then Bible history, and then doubt the reliability of the Old and New Testaments, and then finally to a doubt the existence of God. Once they've let go of this anchor, they are left to crash against the rocks of unbelief. You are so wise, guys. Satan tempts us to try to be wiser than our creator. Human philosophy has attempted to search out and explain mysteries which will never be revealed throughout eternity. If we would only would search and understand what God has made known of himself and his plans, then we would be content with what God has already revealed. Search and search, church. It's a masterpiece of Satan's deceptions to keep our minds searching and speculating about that which God has not made known and which God does not intend for us to understand. This is how Lucifer lost his place in heaven. Lucifer became dissatisfied because all of the secrets of God's plans were not entrusted to him. Seeking a fable, Mabel, those who are unwilling to accept the plain cutting truths of the Bible are continually seeking for pleasing fables that will quiet their consciousness, consciences. The less spiritual, less self-denying, and less humbling the fable, the greater the delight with which it is accepted. Satan is ready to supply the natural heart's desire, and he palms off his deceptions in the place of truth. The dead aren't dead, Fred. Among the most successful tools of Satan are the deceptive teachings of spiritualism. Through spiritualism, Satan disguises himself as an angel of light and spreads his snares where least suspected. Jesus was just a man, Jan. Another satanic error is the doctrine that denies the divinity of Christ, claiming that Christ had no existence before he was created to come to this world. 
This error directly contradicts the clearest statements of our Savior concerning his relationship with God the Father. This error lowers the conception of the work of redemption and undermines faith in the Bible as a revelation from God. The devil is imaginary, Larry. A subtle and mischievous snare is the belief that Satan has no existence as a personal being, that the name Satan is used in scripture merely to represent men's evil thoughts and desires. Jesus comes at death, Beth, the teaching that the second coming of Christ is his coming to each individual at death is a snare to divert the minds from Christ's personal coming in the clouds of heaven. Miracles cannot occur, sir. Scientists claim there can be no real answer to prayer because this would be a violation of scientific law and miracles cannot exist. The universe, they say, is governed by fixed laws and even God himself can do nothing contrary to these laws. They portray God as bound by his own laws, as if the operation of divine laws could exclude God's freedom to act. This teaching is opposed to the testimony of the scriptures. Miracles were done by Christ and his apostles. The same compassionate Savior lives today, and he is just as willing to listen to the prayer of faith as when he walked visibly among the people. It is a part of God's plan to give us in answer to the prayer of faith that which he would not give if we did not ask. Reject the good with the bad, Dad. There are so many that it is not possible to count all the erroneous doctrines and strange ideas in churches. It is also impossible to estimate the evil results of removing one of the true doctrinal landmarks set in place by the word of God. Few who remove one of these landmarks stop with the rejection of a single truth. The majority continue to set aside one after another of the principles of truth until they become actual unbelievers. These erroneous doctrines have driven many people to skepticism. It is impossible for people to accept erroneous doctrines which outrage their sense of justice, mercy, and goodness. And since these erroneous doctrines are falsely represented as the teaching of the Bible, they refuse to receive the Bible as the word of God. The Bible cramps my style, Kyle. There's a large group of people by whom the word of God is looked upon with distrust because it reproves and condemns sin. These people who are unwilling to obey its requirements try to overthrow its authority. They read the Bible or listen to its teachings as presented from the pulpit merely to find fault with the scriptures or with the sermon. More than a few become unbelievers in order to justify or excuse themselves in their neglect of duty. You're doing great, Kate. Others adopt skeptical principles because of their pride, since they're too lazy to distinguish themselves by accomplishing anything worthy of honor, which requires effort and self-denial. Their goal becomes to secure a reputation for superior wisdom by criticizing the Bible. There is much in the Bible which our finite minds are powerless to understand until we are enlightened by divine wisdom. Skeptics take advantage of this situation to criticize. There are many who seem to feel that it is a virtue to stand on the side of unbelief and skepticism, but underneath an appearance of fairness, it will be found that such persons are actuated by self-confidence and pride. Love to debate, Nate. Many delight in finding something in the scriptures to puzzle the minds of others. Some at first criticize and reason on the wrong side from a mere love of controversy. They do not realize they are entangling themselves in a snare of Satan. 
having openly expressed unbelief, they feel they must maintain that same position. They unite with the ungodly and close the entrance gates of heaven. Understand it all, Paul. The finite minds of people are inadequate to fully understand the pur purposes and plans of our infinite God. We must not attempt to lift with a presumptuous hand the curtain behind which God veils his majesty. We can comprehend God's dealings with us, and we can see his infinite love and mercy united to infinite power. Our Heavenly Father orders everything in wisdom and righteousness, and we are not to be dissatisfied and distrustful, but we are to bow in reverent submission. God will reveal to us as much of his reasons as it is for our good to know, and beyond that we must trust his all-powerful hand and his all-loving heart. You want to doubt it, Kit. While God has given ample evidence for faith, he will never remove all excuse for unbelief. All who look for hooks to hang their doubts upon will find them. Those people who refuse to accept and obey God's word until every objection has been removed and there is no longer any opportunity for doubt will never come to the light. Your faith is okay, Jay. Faith is inspired by the Holy Spirit, but faith will prosper only if it is cherished. No person can become strong in faith without a determined effort. Unbelief strengthens as it is encouraged. If people, instead of dwelling upon the evidences which God has given to sustain their faith, permit themselves to question and raise trivial objections, they will find their doubts constantly becoming more confirmed. Unsure of God's grace, Jace, those who doubt God's promises and distrust the assurance of his grace are dishonoring God, and their influence, instead of drawing others to Christ, tends to repel others from Christ. They are like unproductive trees that spread their dark branches, shutting out the sunlight from other plants and causing them to droop and die under their shadow. The work of these persons will witness against them. They are sowing seeds of doubt and skepticism that will yield a bitter harvest. Feel strongly each way, Faye. Some are confused as to whether or not they honestly desire to be freed from doubts. Instead of questioning and raising trivial objections concerning that which they do not understand, they need to pay attention to the light which already shines upon them, and they will receive greater light. They need to do every duty which has been made plain to their understanding, and they will be enabled to understand and perform those duties of which they are now in doubt. Can't tell them apart, Art. Satan can present a counterfeit so closely resembling the truth that it deceives those who are willing to be deceived, those who desire to shun the self-denial and sacrifice demanded by the truth. But it is impossible for Satan to hold under his power a person who honestly desires at whatever cost, to know the truth. God enjoys your distress, Bess. The followers of Christ know little of the plots which Satan and his evil angels are planning against them. The Lord permits his people to be subjected to the fiery ordeal of temptation, not because the Lord takes pleasure in their distress and pain because this process is essential to our final victory. God will not shield us from all temptation because the very object of the trial is to prepare us to resist all the attractions of evil. God also will not allow us to be tempted beyond what we are able to bear and will also make a way of escape. 
Sinning can't stop, Pop. Neither wicked people nor devils can hinder the work of God or shut out his presence from his people if they will, with subdued, repentant hearts, confess and put away their sins and in faith claim God's promises. Every temptation, every opposing influence, whether open or secret, may be successfully resisted. Go for the money, honey. Just like Balaam, who was attracted by the promise of rich rewards and tried to cast magic spells against the nation of Israel, many today will do the wrong things for the love of money. It's about sex, Rex. Just like Israel, who was seduced into sexual sin thanks to Balaam's idea, sexual immorality and sexual addition, addiction today snares many in its powerful grip. When we transgress God's commandments, we separate ourselves from God and are left to feel the power of Satan, the destroyer. It's a sneak attack, Jack. Satan is fully aware that the weakest person who abides in Christ is more than a match for the host of evil. Satan is fully aware that if he revealed himself openly, he would be met and resisted. Therefore, Satan seeks to draw away the soldiers of the cross from our strong fortification while he lies in ambush with his forces, ready to destroy all who venture upon his ground. Satan's a Bible expert, Kurt. We should especially ask the Lord for wisdom to understand his word. In the Bible are revealed the tricks of the devil and the methods by which he may be successfully resisted. Satan is an expert in quoting scripture, placing his own interpretation upon passages by which he hopes to cause us to stumble. We should study the Bible with humility of heart, never losing sight of our dependence upon God. If I stopped here, this would be depressing. Satan has so many tricks up his sleeve, many I didn't even mention, and we are at seemingly a disadvantage. But I've got great news for you. There is a successful plan to counteract Satan's counterfeits. It's God's plan. God's plan is straightforward. But that doesn't mean that it's an easy plan to adopt. Many of the things in life that are most worth doing are difficult things. God's plan includes God's spirit. As it says in Zechariah 4, 6, Not by might, nor by power, but by my spirit, says the Lord Almighty. The plan also includes God's power. As it says in Matthew 19, they were exceedingly amazed, saying, Who then can be saved? But Jesus beheld them and said unto them, With men this is impossible, but with God all things are possible. God's armor. Put on the whole armor of God, that ye may be able to stand against the wiles. That could be the snares, the tricks, the schemes of the devil from Ephesians 6, 11. And we're not going to have a sermon on the whole armor of God, but it's in here in Ephesians chapter 6. And at the end of the list of the armor, it says, praying always with all prayer and supplication in the Spirit, and watching thereunto with all perseverance and supplication for all saints praying constantly and praying for each other. Pray without ceasing. Pray continually. 1 Thessalonians 5, 17. Ellen, Wright, Ellen White wrote a couple things about prayer that I found particularly relevant. Steps to Christ, page 93. Prayer is the opening of the heart to God as to a friend. And Great Controversy, page 530. No man is safe 
for a day or an hour without prayer. I believe that this sermon topic is important enough that Jesus addressed it directly in a portion of the Lord's Prayer. He first said, then this is how you should pray, and then went on to pray in part, do not lead us into temptation, but deliver us from the evil one. My prayer is that God's spirit, God's power, and God's armor will keep us all safely abiding in him continually through prayer, hour by hour and day by day. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for your plan. Thank you that you're willing to hear our prayers and talk with us and like a friend well known thank you for the armor that you offer thank you for your love for us for your power thank you that you won the war at the cross help us to not be snared but instead to choose you day by day and hour by hour uh, talking to you in prayer, not being tricked by the devil. Please be with us as we depart from this worship service and keep us uh, safe in your arms. I ask these things in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and our Savior. Amen.